right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are finally here, COSI Talks 101 live event series. So since it's our first day and we're trying out some new software, I'm gonna go ahead and give everybody just a couple of minutes to jump on board. And guys, as you jump on board, it's available both on the YouTube Cozy Talks channel and also on my Facebook Cozy Talks page. Put out something in the comment section. Let me know that you're here and it also helps me know if my software is working. Fingers crossed, prayers said. So we've got Amber on board. Amber, thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, if you can hear me okay, I've got my microphone on, I've got all my fancy equipment. Give me a thumbs up in the comment section. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Guys, I am so excited about today's event. I have been eating, breathing, sleeping this live event basically since March, ever since our shutdown, preparing for this event and with uh, my entire team helping out. Bobby, thank you so much for that feedback. I really appreciate that so much. Susan, I am so happy that you are with me today and thank I, I'm so happy that you're home and, and praying for your recovery. Hey, que hola, nena. Hey, Charles, how are you? John, hey. John, I understand, but thanks for stopping in there. Hey, Doug, everybody can hear me. Thank you guys so much. Um, I truly appreciate all this help. Like I said, guys, I have been eating, breathing, and sleeping this live event since the shutdown in March. And I wanna do take this opportunity to shout out to the entire team that's been helping out um, with this process. Uh, first of all, my three amazing sponsors, Blatchford, College Park Industries, and Vital Fit, and their entire team, Eric, Laura, Jamie, Chris, and Mark, all the way in England, helping out making this event possible. So without your help, guys, I could not do this. So the deepest, deepest, deepest gratitude for this. And for my tech team who has been beyond amazing, Kristen is on board helping me out. I have a beautiful photographer here in the studio who's taking some wonderful pictures. And I have my incredibly special guest for today, Jessica. And I can't wait for you guys to finally meet her in person. You guys have been seeing her videos and seeing her literally give me a run for my money <laughs> running videos. Matthew, good to have you on board. Dick Devers, hey, Peer Founder, thank you. First timer and thank you for coming and thanks guys for giving me the feedback. Uh, Jesse, closed caption. Well, that's a nice little bonus. I didn't realize there was closed captioning on this. <laughs> that's great. Jim, I am so happy that you could join us live today. So guys, for those of you who are kind of the first time watching this and wondering who is this crazy person talking on camera, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself and what you see behind you. For those of you joining me, my name is Kosi Belloso. I am a physical therapist amputee specialist. I've been a physical therapist now for over 17 years and working with the limb loss community is my passion. I live here in Tampa, Florida, which is kind of a hot spot right now with COVID, but we're working through it. And I have my own private practice here in Tampa where I work exclusively with amputees and teaching them how to get ready for their prosthesis, how to walk and how to run and get back to their goals and lives. So I also host Cozy Talks, which is what this show is. And I go live every Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. And I just talk about recovery from limb loss and I answer questions. So the whole reason behind this live event series is, you know, because of all the cancellations quite frankly. I know that at least two of the conferences that I was supposed to speak at this year were canceled or were made virtual. And I know that I was really disappointed to not be able to go in person and participate in these conferences. And I know that for so many of you, um, your clinics, your amputee boot camps, um, your conferences, everything has been canceled and shut down because of COVID and our world being turned upside down. And in, in my opinion, as we are trying to move through this as a society, as a nation, as a global community, our personal lives also need to keep moving forward. So for my patients, I see that they need to keep moving forward with their recovery from limb loss. And that's what I see for you all as well. So in this live event series for today, tomorrow and Thursday, I am trying to bring these conferences back to you. So I've got a lot of stuff planned today, a lot of stuff planned for tomorrow and Thursday, and I am so excited. Oh, Patrick, that's so sweet. Benny, como esta? All right, so we got people here from the YouTube channel and from Facebook, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. And we're gonna mention a little bit about that violin today. So today's topic, guys, is all about proprioception. What is it and why do we care? So 
some of you may have already heard this talk, but I encourage you to listen in again because you might pick up something new. And for some of you hearing this for the first time, hopefully you're gonna have a little light bulb aha moment as you kind of learn a little bit more about this and why it's so important to know about this as you continue to learn to use your prosthesis and work on your mobility. So we're gonna have three segments today, guys. We're gonna do uh, a short lecture on proprioception. Then we're gonna do our first giveaway. Then I'm gonna bring on board my dear friend, Jessica. She's gonna show us some exercises that will help you specifically with your proprioception. And then we're gonna hear her beautiful story. So guys, we got three giveaways planned today. We're gonna have some giveaways on Instagram, some giveaways on Facebook. So keep those phones, keep those tabs handy. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is proprioception? Okay, simply stated, proprioception is your body's ability to know where it is in space. So quick cosy poll. Those of you who have been with me for a while, you guys know that I love my cosy polls and I like seeing my interaction here in the comments section so I don't feel like I'm just kind of talking to myself. Okay, so first cosy poll. How many of you, when you take a step with your prosthesis, how many of you know where your foot's gonna land without looking at it? Let me put that in there. Without looking at it, how many of you know for sure you know where your foot's gonna land every time you put that foot on the floor? How many of you, when you're walking, okay, are able to look to the side and continue walking without stumbling? Okay, let's start seeing in those comments. I wanna hear your comments about this. Okay, this is something I hear a lot from my own patients that when they are walking and they are distracted by a sudden noise that they stumble because they're not looking down at their feet or when they put their foot out, especially a lot of times with my above the knee amputees, that they don't know consistently where that foot is going to be placed. Okay, guys, this is due to proprioception or more importantly, your lack of. Okay. So this is one example I like to use a lot. When a violinist is playing their instrument, the violinist is not looking at the left hand fingers. The violinist is not looking at the right arm with the bow. The violinist is usually looking at the music, right? Especially me, because I'm terrible at memorizing music. So when I play violin, I'm not looking to see what this left hand is doing or what my right arm is doing. Why? Because my brain understands what my two arms are doing in space. I don't need to look at them. I have a honed sense of proprioception. Okay, so let's look at some of these comments. Jim says somewhat and yes, I no longer look at my feet. So Jim is an example of someone who has good proprioceptive skills. Charles says he's blind in his right eye. So you're going to have a little bit more difficulty of knowing where that foot is in space. Grant says me too most of the time, but do stumble on occasion when looking to the side. Okay, and I know that many of you, when you were beginning to learn to use your prosthesis, this was a big problem. Okay, so the reason why I like to use violin and playing like this as, a, as an example of what proprioception means, number one, because I took way too many lessons as a kid, and that's just part of my life. Number two, for me, learning how to walk is like playing a violin. Stay with me on this one. The violin is actually two instruments, the left hand, and the right arm. And you have to coordinate both, both arms to produce a smooth and beautiful sound. That's a lot like learning how to walk with a prosthesis, okay? You're having to use two different instruments together coordinated to produce a smooth and beautiful gait pattern. So guys, Let's talk a little. Hey, Sandra, you're new and joining in. Thank you so much for joining us, Sandra. Stick around. Hopefully you're going to learn a lot more today. Mariela, I'm so glad you're here today. So guys, let's talk a little bit. How is it that proprioception is learned? Okay. Three systems, three systems. And anybody who's out there who's listened to this speech before, let's see if you can name these three systems before I do. Let's see who are my smarty pants out there. First system, visual, the eyes. Second system, vestibular, your inner ear. And the third system, proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are these little things in your muscle fibers. I like to think of them as like Pac-Man. You remember that, that 80s video game Pac-Man? I know I'm showing my age right now. 
So these little proprioceptors are located all in your muscles and they're basically gobbling up all the information to find out where your foot, where your arm is in space. Okay, so this is how you learn proprioception, visual through the eyes, vestibular through the ears, and the proprioceptors located in your muscles. Okay, let's see, we got Charles Becker, when I run, at least I lead with my amputated limb. Good, and we're gonna get to that, Charles. We're gonna be talking about that during the exercise program. Hey, Jody, so glad that you could join us. Okay, so what happens is these three systems, visual, vestibular, proprioceptors, they send information from the environment, shoot it into your spinal cord up to your brain. Your brain interprets that information and sends it back out to your muscles and your nervous system telling you where to put your foot, where to put your hand in space. So what happens during an amputation? Okay, all of this gets thrown kablooey and that's my very highly technical term for it, okay? The muscles become transected right? Whether it's across the calf or across the thigh in the case of an above the knee amputee. So the muscles that used to be on the top of your leg are now a part of the bottom of your residual limb. Think about that. Those of you who are my above the knee amputees, your thigh, that used to be the top of your leg and now it's the bottom of your limb and your brain is trying to interpret this, okay? So you got all the proprioceptors in the muscles of your thigh going, hey, what's going on? What's going on? Your vestibular system, your visual system is going, what's going on? And your brain's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And it starts to send mixed signals. Guys, how many of you have phantom pain or phantom sensation? I better see my commentary lighting up right now. Better see my commentary lighting up. Jesse, muscle memory does play a role in that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that, Jesse, and that's an excellent point, okay? So guys, how many of you, okay, Michelle says me, how many of you have that phantom pain, phantom sensation? If you line up 10 different clinicians, you'll probably get 10 different answers as to what causes phantom pain or phantom sensation. In my professional opinion, I think it's a combination of several different factors, one of which is proprioception, because your brain is trying to interpret the information and all it remembers is what it felt like before you lost the limb. And the reason why that I think that proprioception plays a huge role in phantom pain and sensation is because when I see my patients and I start hammering them with proprioceptive exercises, many of them tell me that the sensation and the pain starts to diminish. It never necessarily goes away completely. We haven't figured out that magic cure yet but it does start to improve. The more you hone your proprioceptive skills, the more your brain starts to accept that prosthesis as a real leg, okay? So we're here, let me see if some of this, uh, let me see some of these comments coming in. Bonnie says, big time, almost all the time. Charles says, yes. The Peer Founder says, yes, a little, but not often. Jody thinks, says it's, yeah, absolutely. We got Cliff on board saying yes. And Grant says, phantom sensation always, pain luckily not often. And again, everybody's just a little bit different and I'm just kind of giving this as an example, guys, okay? So, how do we treat this? How do we treat this? Basically, we need to retrain the brain. And Jesse, this is where that muscle memory comes in. Muscle memory can work and the brain can remember previous skills but it just needs to kind of relearn it again, okay? And this is another example I always like to give some of my PT students. I used to work a lot with stroke patients and patients with traumatic brain injury, TBIs. And I remember walking in to see one of my very first stroke patients as a new physical therapist, and she was lying in the bed. I introduced myself, and she was looking at her arm, the side that was paralyzed, and she was looking at her arm going, whose arm is that in my bed? And I'm just like, well, ma'am, it's your arm. She's like, no, it's not my arm. And I go, yes, it is. Look at your arm. It's attached to your body. So because of her stroke, her brain couldn't even recognize her anatomical arm. And she had to relearn that all over again. Her brain had to recognize and relearn that that arm was a part of her body. 
so that she could start learning to use the balance and coordination again. This is very similar with amputees when they're first learning to use that prosthesis. The brain has to learn to recognize that that prosthesis is in fact their leg. And there's ways to do this, and we're gonna show you how to do this in the exercise segment coming up. And that's one of the things that kind of fascinates me about this is the number one, the brain's ability to heal from some of these injuries and the brain's ability to relearn these skills or even learn them for the first time. For, for some of my amputees who have been trying to walk for years and they've developed some bad habits, it amazes me how we can reverse some of those bad habits and teach them new good ones, okay? So how do we teach proprioception? I'm gonna to get to that in just a minute, but I think now we're actually gonna have our very first giveaway. So guys, get your phones out, get your computers ready, start opening up tabs on the other section. This first giveaway is sponsored by College Park Industries. And guys, today we are giving away one of their highly coveted, and let me tell you, these things are hot, okay? I always get questions on how they can get a rebuilt shirt. A rebuilt shirt along with a $25 Amazon gift card. So guys, are you ready for this? Ready for the giveaway? You need to go to the College Park Facebook page, like it, and then you need to post hashtag I am rebuilt. So Kristen, if you're on board, if you can post that for me, that would be awesome. So guys, let me say one more time. If you want a chance to win this giveaway, you need to go to the College Park Facebook page, like it, and then you need to post on their Facebook page, not here, on their Facebook page, I want you to post hashtag I am and rebuilt. And guys, College Park was the very first sponsor I had for this show. They were the very first company to recognize my mission and what I was trying to do with the amputee community and bringing education, information, and empowerment with my show. So I am forever grateful to College Park for all of their support. And they have created now this new beautiful website, the Rebuilt website. And I know Laura's gonna throw that link up there for me as well so you guys can show some love there. It's a beautiful website with some amazing resources for you as amputees. They have amazing ambassadors. Some of them have been, actually all of them have been on my show at this point. Reggie Showers, Haven Shepard. We've got Oscar Loretto and our WWE wrestler, Zach Allen. Chock full of information on this website. So guys, at some point, show some love to my sponsors. They were helping bring this show to you. So let's see. All right, and as we're waiting to see who is our first winner, so remember guys, if you want to win this giveaway, and I'm checking my phone to see who it's gonna be. If you want to win this giveaway, go to the College Park Facebook page, hit like and post hashtag I am rebuilt. So as we're waiting for our winner to come in, let me talk a little bit more about how do you teach proprioception. So we're gonna go over these exercises, but basically I like to say you have to feed your brain. You have to feed your brain through the visual system through the vestibular system, through the proprioceptors, those little Pac-Men located in your muscle fibers. And you have to feed your brain this information so that it can start to learn and accept this prosthesis. Sounds good? All right, guys. And then here's another great example that I like to give. I had a lovely lady tomorrow, Karen. Karen was one of my first patients when I first opened up my clinic a couple of years back. And I gave her these exercises to do. And these were the exercises that we're gonna do in just a couple minutes. Very simple exercises, very simple exercises. And she was a little skeptical because she said, these exercises seem very basic, very easy. And I basically said, just trust me, go home and do these exercises. And she did for one week, guys, just one week of doing these exercises, no other strengthening exercises, no other coordination or balance exercises, just the exercises that I'm gonna be showing you in a couple of minutes. And when she came back, she said, oh my goodness. For the first time in a long time, I feel more grounded. I feel more connected with my prosthesis and the floor. And I can be at my kitchen washing dishes and not feel like I'm having to catch myself every two seconds. Y'all know that feeling? And she also said how she was working at her kitchen sink and she could occasionally reach for things without necessarily losing her balance. Those exercises are coming up in two minutes. And guys, we have our first winner. 
Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, Maggie Hall. Maggie Hall is our winner of the Rebuilt shirt and the Amazon $25 gift card. Maggie, congratulations. Maggie, we're going to be taking your information. What I need for you to do, darling, is go ahead and message me to my Cozy Talks Facebook message and send me your address so that we can send you your prizes. Okay, guys, so don't go away. I'm going to actually pause the video for just a moment, and we're going to change a couple of things here in the studio so that we can show you these exercises. Hey, there you go. There you go, Maggie. So Maggie, send me your information and we'll get your goodies out to you. Thank you once again to College Park for this giveaway. All right, guys, let me see if I can make sure I can do this right. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right Okay, guys, we're back. All right, so if you guys can hear me, we were jiggling things around a little bit here. Can you guys give me a thumbs up or can you guys, not thumbs up, because I can't see the emojis. Can you guys tell me in the comment section if you can hear me okay? And we're gonna wait and see for everybody to come back on board and join with us. And I apologize for cutting off poor Jessica's head here. You're gonna get to meet her a little bit better in our interview segment. Um, but I really want the focus, I want you guys to see what's going on with her feet for these next exercises. So yes, Jody, definitely. It's all about the positive attitude. Jody, I am so glad that you were able to join us today. She says, I think phantom feelings are cool and fun. They are certainly interested. You can hear me fine. Thank you, Jody, for letting me know. Kristen, awesome, can hear me. Everything is working out beautifully with the sound. Hallelujah. All right, guys, we're going to get started with these exercises. And Jesse, you want to just kind of poke down and say hello? <laughs> we're a little limited here with our camera shots, guys. But again, I want you guys to see what's going on with the feet right now. And then we're going to see Jessica's beautiful face for the interview segment. So we were just talking about proprioception, your ability to know where your body is in space. OK, and this is one of the foundational exercises and actually all the exercises that I'll be doing during these next three days. These are the foundational exercises that I pretty much give to every single person who comes through my clinic, Jessica included. And Jessica, by the way, is a high end athlete. This girl can run like it's nobody's business. And I give her these exercises. So these are exercises that are great for my beginners, my intermediate and my advanced prosthetic users. This is a great exercise for my below the knee amputees, my above the knee amputees, my bilateral amputees. You guys are getting the picture here. And what I love about these exercises that I'll be doing for the next three days, you can do it from the safety and the comfort of your own home. Okay, guys? So let's go ahead and get started with this exercise. The first thing I always do with my patients is I have them square up. And that's how you guys can tell that I lived in Texas for many years because I use that kind of terminology. So what Jessica is going to do, I have my foot here and hopefully you guys can see what's going on. She is going to put one foot on each side of my feet. And actually, I'm going to have her come in just a little bit closer. So one thing I always say, guys, is John Wayne 
is the only guy who can make it look cool to stand with his legs this far apart. He's the only guy who's got the cowboy swagger. Nobody else can pull it off. So what does that mean? It means I bring my patient's feet close together. So you should technically be standing when you've got your feet together between four to six inches apart, depending on how tall you are. That's really not a whole lot, okay? So this is what I do, and I call it square up. I'm bringing people back to that normal base of support. And usually this tends to throw people off because when you wear that prosthesis, you have a tendency to wanna to stand with your feet further apart, right? So this is how we just start retraining the brain, just by teaching you how to square up. So what Jessica has done beautifully already is that she's matched up her toes. So everything is nicely even Steven. So when I get my patients like this, especially my beginners, once I have them in the square up position, I take my foot away and then I have my patients look down. Okay, remember what I said, guys? You have to feed your brain. You have to feed the visual, your eyes. You have to feed the vestibular system through your inner ear. And you have to feed the proprioceptors that are located in your muscle fibers. So in looking down, basically Jessica's brain is saying, oh, look, there's a foot. And oh, look, it's attached to our body. And oh, look, it's supporting us. Maybe we can trust it. So this is the first step, no pun intended. So once my, my patient has their square up position here, and guys, for those of you who are clinicians out there, any physical therapist, any, any uh, prosthetist that might be listening, a lot of this is also great diagnostic tools and the foundational exercises that I'm gonna be doing for the next couple of days, great diagnostic tools in terms of socket fit, muscle weakness and balance. It helps me figure out a lot of things as well. So the first thing I'm gonna have Jessica do is I'm gonna have her start shifting her weight over to her prosthetic side. In her case, her left side, the outer leg right here. And then I'm gonna have her shift to the right. Now, if you notice, I'm not having Jessica shift very much. It's very subtle movement. In fact, you can probably barely see her moving on the camera. And here's the reason for that. Number one, I want her to start activating these hip muscles and even the glute muscles in the back. These are the muscles that are gonna help stabilize and power your gait pattern. And we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow. So as she's shifting her weight back and forth, she's starting to activate these muscles, okay? she's also activating her vestibular system. So she's looking down using her visual. She's challenging her vestibular system by moving back and forth. And then every single time she shifts her weight to her prosthetic side, all those proprioceptors located in her muscle fibers are gobbling up all those Pac-Men, they're gobbling up all that information. And this is a huge, and I know there's probably hopefully a lot of heads nodding right now behind computer screens, where there are many of you who have trouble putting weight into that prosthesis and really trusting that prosthesis. This is where you begin, folks. This is where you begin. Now, I am a stickler for form. So remember, feet need to be in the square up position. And many times I have to stop my patients, have them re-square up, okay, and not big, huge movements. We're not doing the hula girl dance with the hips because at that point you're just using momentum and hanging on your ligaments, small movements, okay? So once you feel like you've mastered side to side, then we change it up and we go forward and backwards, okay? Forward, and if you can't see the movement too well on the camera, what she's doing is basically rocking from her heel to her toes, okay? So again, we're activating the visual system by looking down. We're activating the vestibular system just by the shape, shifting of the weight. And every time she's putting weight into here, so her leg is getting all that information. As a clinician, it helps me also see, is she putting weight evenly between both legs, which she is doing quite beautifully. So this is another great diagnostic tool for us as clinicians as well. Okay, back and forth. And additionally, this one's got a lot of good stuff packed into it. She's starting to activate her presses. I might actually have them push against me a little bit and provide some resistance like I'm doing right now with her and start activating these core muscles. Really cool story. I was doing a video conference with a gentleman who had a hemipelvectomy. So he was missing his entire hip bone here and the entire leg. He had nothing here. 
he had a beautiful prosthesis made and we had him doing this exercise. And for the first time, he could feel his abdominal muscles starting to work, which is a good thing because he needed that to be able to move, help move that prosthesis forward. So we're moving forward and back, okay? Forward and back. So once you've mastered this part of the exercise, we're gonna take it up a notch. So we're gonna have Jessica stagger her feet or put them in a diagonal pattern. We're gonna go ahead and just take a little bit further back with that right side just there, okay? So Jessica's a tall gal, so her step length is gonna be just a little bit bigger. And here, let me get my feet out of the way so you guys can see what's going on, okay? So she has her feet in a diagonal pattern. There. <laughs> I gotta move my feet out of the way, okay? So that it looks like about the space of a normal step. And then we start the movement again. She's gonna come forward and then back and forward and back. And this is great for my below the knee amputees. It helps me see just how stable their knee, their anatomical knee is. For my above the knee amputees, this can be a little scary, which is why I always recommend doing it in parallel bars or with two sturdy chairs or kitchen counter is a big one that I like patients to use when they're at home. With my above the knee amputees, this is a great way for you to test out your knee in a safe place. So you can test out just how much load you have to put onto that toe before it starts to bend on you. How much you can bend the knee before it stops bending on you. Okay, so all the knees have a little bit different functions in them. So this is a really great way for you to start testing out that knee and start gaining confidence. And even with Jessica, she's got a little bit of a tremble here. So this is actually, she's having to work a little bit here to do this. It looks very simple, but you gotta do some work. What I also love about this exercise, guys, again, we are retraining your brain. It's teaching your brain what it feels like to take a normal size step, normal size step in a very simplified environment so that your brain can focus on one task. So after doing it this way, then I have people switch up, okay? And bring their sound limb forward. Now guys, unless somebody's having a lot hard time, I always like to start my exercises with the prosthetic side. I like to lead with the prosthetic side as long as we're being safe. Why? Retrain that brain. I want that brain to understand that the prosthetic side is just as capable and just as responsible as leading as the anatomical side. Does that make sense, guys? So once again, actually, we're gonna bring this foot a little bit further forward. I told you I'm a nitpicker for form, all right? So we're gonna be going forward and back, forward and back. And again, you guys notice, she's not doing these massively huge movements. Um, it's just very small, subtle movements. She's engaging her core muscles here in the front. And then I can put some resistance in the back for those of you who are clinicians and bringing it forward and giving her resistance in different planes like this to, for the more advanced amputee users. Okay, guys? So Jess, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and do our second giveaway for today. So guys, my second giveaway is brought to us by Vital Fit. They are the skincare solution. I'm gonna go ahead and fix my camera just a little bit here. Okay. So our next uh, is uh, Vital Care Skin, so Vital Fit, excuse me, Skin Care Solutions. These folks have been with me since the beginning of 2020. I am so excited to have them on, on the Cozy Talks team helping sponsor the show. Uh, for so many years, I didn't have any kind of resources to be able to recommend to my patients for caring for their skin. There was nothing that was specifically designed for the amputee, for the diabetic, for the prosthetic user. And this line, which I'm gonna show you right now, is specifically designed for the amputees, okay? So today's giveaway, guys, is go to the Vital Fit Facebook page, and we're gonna go ahead and post that link up there. Thank you, Kristen. The Vital Fit Facebook page, hit like or put a post on there, and you're gonna win this four-part skincare system, and it's the full size, guys. It's a really, really nice system with it. You're gonna get the cleanser, you're gonna get the day moisturizer, you're gonna get the liquid to powder lotion, and you're also gonna get the nighttime moisturizer. And guys, I've had these folks on my show a couple of times already talking about skincare, common skin problems. So if you're interested in learning more, go ahead and go back to the Cozy Talks Facebook page and you can catch some of these videos. So, okay guys, first person 
to hit like on the Vital Fit Facebook page. And if you've already liked their page, post something there, give them a shout out. First person to do so is going to win these prizes. All right, let's start looking at some of these comments real quick and let's see what's going on. We've got a lot of comments coming in that I wasn't able to see from back there. So I want to see if I can't catch some of these comments. So Jesse says, I have problems with squaring up when you are born and walk a certain way for say 34 years, your tendons and muscles are different lengths. When doctors and PTs try to get me to perfect position, it ended up tearing tendons. So yes, Jesse, you bring up an excellent point. We are not built anatomically symmetrically perfect. None of us are. We all have our asymmetries. So when I have someone come in who is similar to yourself, who had these asymmetries prior to amputation, then I definitely take that into account. So for example, many people, when I put them in that square up position, their feet are externally rotated, okay? And meaning that the toes are kind of pointing out and that's just how they were made. That's just how they were born. And we work within that. So certainly the textbook pattern is to say that your feet should be about four to six inches apart. And we try to get as close as possible as we can to this. And if it's something that can be reversed without causing any additional damage, obviously, then we try to do so. And guys, this is where I am going to take the opportunity to advocate for my profession. This is why physical therapy is so crucial in the recovery from limb loss, because these are the things that as clinicians we look for, we diagnose, and we treat, okay? And we are trained to look at these little nuances to see the differences between individuals, to see what's the difference here between squaring up in this person compared to the next person. So good point. All right, let's see what other comments we got coming in. All right, there's a lot of messages coming in, so I'm trying to keep up with all these. Okay. All right, guys, we are waiting for the next person to come in. So ooh, looks like we've got our first winner for our second winner for today uh, for our Vital Fit package, Mike Prokop. So Mike, you are the winner for today. Congratulations. Please be sure to send me your address through the Facebook Messenger on my message account in Cozy Talks, either Facebook or through my website. You can email me there so that we can send you your prizes. OK, guys, we're going to take one minute break. We're going to kind of zhuzh the studio up a little bit and put some chairs here and we're going to hear jessica's beautiful story and i can't wait for you to get to know her all right guys stick around i'll be right back Okay, guys, we are back. Guys, since we're coming back, microphone over with Jessica, because I've got a big mouth, so y'all are tired of listening to me. I want to make sure you hear everything that Jessica has to say. So guys, if you can give Jessica a shout out, she was so lovely, then a time out of her schedule to come and be with us today and share her story. And I am so grateful to her. Um, she came to see me as a patient a little while back. And honestly, I've come to consider her a friend. So thank you so much for being here today. So excited. Um, guys, if you can hear us, can you just kind of throw in the comments section? Yes, we can hear you. No, we can't hear you. Kosi, stop talking and let Jessica start telling her story. Whatever you want to say, go ahead and put it in there for us. All right, we're waiting here. 
Oh, there we go. Jim says, welcome, Jessica. <laughs> All right. So guys, some of you might recognize beautiful Jessica's face because she has been on many of my running videos, both on Instagram and on Facebook. She is an amazing runner, an athlete, a software engineer. I mean, she's just kind of the whole package right here. So she's going to tell us her story. Uh, Des Pierpont says, thank you for sharing, Jessica, and I can't wait to hear if you can hear us. Fine, good. Michelle, you can hear us. Bonnie says, hey, Jessica. Tom says, hear us. Yes. So we're good to go. So guys, one of my favorite things about being a physical therapist is I get to, and especially with my practice, I get to spend a lot of time with my patients and I get to hear their stories. And that's probably one of my favorite things. I hear stories from World War II veterans. I hear stories from moms who are trying to figure out how to raise kids and, and recover from a crisis. I hear from, you know, stories of young athletes trying to get back to their mobility and get back to the things that they love to do. And I think what's important about sharing these stories and why I'm so grateful that Jessica is going to share hers is when we are going through these traumas, through these crises, we need to know that we're not alone in this, that there are other people who are also struggling and that there's hope. So for those of you who don't know, I am a breast cancer survivor myself and hearing stories of other women go through breast cancer helped me in my own journey. And I hope, and I know, I don't hope, I know that you're going to get some of that from hearing Jessica's story today. Okay. Pat says, hi, Jessica, I can hear you just fine. Okay. So Jessica, tell us a little where, where were you? From St. Pete, Florida. So just over the bridge from Cozy. I um, was born and raised there. So yeah. Here pretty much my whole life. Which, by the way, guys, if you've never been to Florida, so when, once, once things start kind of calming <laughs> down a bit, we can travel a little bit more safely. St. Petersburg is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. beach town, some beautiful beaches there. So what was your life prior to amputation? Oh, man. Uh, I've always, so I would work during the day. And then since I'm on a computer all day in my free time, I want to do anything and everything I can to get my body moving and be outside and active. So I was um, my two primary hobbies were um, dirt biking and running at the time, but tennis, swimming, uh, regular bicycling, uh, just anything I could do, I wanted to try it. And wakeboarding did that too. The um, so yeah, that was pretty good. And um, as, as a professional, she is a software engineer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which thank goodness for that, because we were having some technical <laughs> glitches prior to the show and this girl worked some magic and she made it all work. So, so tell us a little bit about what happened. Uh, so I guess my other hobby, which cleared two things cleared my mind, um, was running and riding my motorcycle. So my motorcycle was my primary transportation for years. And, um, I was actually on my way to running one day after work to go to the track and, uh, an elderly lady was stopped heading the opposite direction of me and I was going about 30 miles an hour and I didn't think anything of it because she was stopped waiting to make a left-hand turn and I got in front of her and she basically just gunned her SUV into me. Um, so that is how I lost my leg. <laughs> um, but it... So you went into the hospital after this and I remember you told me a little bit about the story and when you were discharged home you didn't necessarily have the smoothest oh, recovery. No. <laughs> and this is this is something, guys, I bring this up because this is something that so many people go through, that after they've had their surgical amputation, they go home and other things start to happen. Yeah. So, so um, luckily, I was, I knew when it happened, I was conscious the whole time that I was going to end up without a leg. And so when I woke up from surgery, my first question was, when can I run? So... <laughs> So it was, that was a huge uh, thing for me is having something to sort of attach onto, like a goal. And um, I was looking for information um, and it seemed like all I could find was like the butterflies and rainbows that everyone had, had like, post amputation, but they're fully healed. And I'm like looking for, okay, who is, show me something that I can compare myself to uh, as where I am right now. And that was hard for me to find. So 
even right after surgery, I decided like to have my mom document everything. And I have pictures of every single step of the way, which I just, you know, has been kind of overwhelming. I haven't gotten to post them originally. I thought, oh, I'm going to turn my Instagram into like, here's this process, like, because I really want to help other people. But so um, my surgeon did a great job, but um, just, you know, follow up care is not really their specialty. They, they do the job and then they're done. Um, so I had been asking for physical therapy, but he told me that I was already in shape and there was nothing they would be able to provide me. Um, little did he know that it was going to take me eight months of doing walking with crutches and not having a leg. So, you know, things atrophy in a very short amount of time. So, um, that, and then about a month after, well, so my accident was on a Wednesday. I was out of the hospital on that Monday. So I wasn't even in for a week and, um, you know, insurance didn't approve a wheelchair or, uh, even crutches. They just gave me a walker. So that was fun. Um, insurance is fun to deal with, (laughs) but he, uh, I'm sorry. I'm losing my train of thought. Oh yes. So a month after my surgery, I, he cleared me to get into a prosthetic and I was looking around. I wanted to check out different places. I didn't want to just go with the first place that I went to. And, you know, he had, um, there was someone that he normally works with and recommends patients to. So they had come to like my hospital room and that was helpful to see like one of their, the person that worked for them was also an amputee. So I enjoyed like getting to talk to her and everything. Um, but unfortunately I wasn't fully healed. It was just like scabbed over. So, um, when I did, they made the prosthesis and I walked on it for maybe 30 minutes and my incision ripped open and, um, and got infected. But in this whole process, they didn't ever look like the prosthetist didn't ever look at my limb, which was under bandages which now I know, but but then I didn't know. I thought that was the process. So, um, but now I know, no, they're supposed to actually inspect your limb every single time. So um, learning lesson there. But um, after that, I actually had to go to wound care once a week for them to debreed it and basically scrape it until it bleeds with nothing numbing you. So that was good practice for your breathing and meditation. But um, so eight months, after surgery is when I finally found um, the place that I go to now, and they're amazing, and I'm very, very grateful for them. And not long after that, I happened to actually randomly meet another amputee on the beach, and we were like, hey, what are the odds, right? And um, he was down here working with Cozy, and he told me about her, and so became friends with him, became friends with Cozy, started seeing Cozy and everything started taking off since then because I wasn't really making much progress. Like, I mean, your prosthetist helps you a lot, but, but they're not, their job is not to teach you how to do things again, I guess. Yeah. So and, and this is something we talk about a lot. And actually we're going to switch that mic over to this side because oh. I'm hearing that we're not hearing people. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you guys for the feedback. We've got one microphone to connect to the computer, so I appreciate the feedback. So guys, if there's one thing that you, those of you who have been listening to my show, you've heard me say so much, uh, the importance of having that team approach, having the prosthetist and the physical therapist, you can't have one without the other. I know as a clinician, I can't do my job unless I'm communicating with the prosthetist and vice versa, because you know, I'd like to say the prosthetist builds the car, physical therapist teaches us how to drive the car. And you can see an example, you know, Jessica's an extremely healthy young woman, very athletic and being told that she didn't need physical therapy and she did. So this is something I always like to advocate for and you can advocate for yourself. And guys, there's there's good prosthetists and there's not so good prosthetists. There's good PTs and there's not so good PTs, we're human. So if you feel like there's something about your clinician, whether it's your physical therapist or your prosthetist, that they're not checking the wounds on your legs, that there's something that's just not right, you have the right to a second opinion. You have the right to look for the clinician that will help you and that you feel comfortable for. 
And that was unfamiliar territory for you because you you didn't know, you know, who to look for or, you know, how you should be looking. Yeah. Um, So I think it's important for us to hear these kind of stories so that you can, because I know this has happened to probably many of you in the past. Okay. Jesse said, major issue is prosthetists pushing sockets too quickly, have to be healed, but no prosthetic in it. There you go. And then sometimes guys, you know, as, as a physical therapist, I've done a lot of work with wound care. That's, that's part of my profession. That's within the scope of my profession. So if I have a patient who has an open wound, an active wound, or even skin abrasions, and we talked about this on a couple, couple weeks back on the Cozy Talk show, this is something that I am monitoring very closely. And then I am talking to the prosthetist because the prosthetist may not necessarily have wound care training and know how to debride a wound. So this is something that we need to have a team approach for. So Jessica, you got your leg and you were a very fast learner. You had that beautiful natural muscle memory, as Jesse was pointing out, and you started walking and you started running, but it hasn't been exactly smooth sailing the whole way through. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about that? Okay. So, yeah, I started running and um, I, or, well, walking first, and uh, I was still pushing my prosthesis. I was like, well, when can I run? When can I run? And he's like, we're throttling you. You have to stop. And I would send him like videos my mom took of me and like the, the screenshot from my garment of like, I walked three miles today. Can I start running? <laughs> and um, so finally I got to the point where he was like, okay, I think, I think we can let you run. But he, you know, obviously cautioned me that like, this is new forces on your limb. Walking is one thing. Running is something completely different. And, um, I went out and ran a 5k after they gave me my blade as my first run. And I remember feeling like this is amazing. My leg isn't hurting me. It's actually just my cardio that is awful. And then the next day I couldn't walk for three weeks hey guys, because it hurt. Point out, this was before she came to see Yes, me. before I came to see <laughs> this, was, this was me trying to do it on my own before I knew Cozy. So not recommended. Take the baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've had a many setbacks along the way. Well, I guess I'll call them learning lessons because I'm just, you know, nothing is ever a waste as long as you learn something from it. So um, I had many times where I pushed myself too fast and too hard and I had to take a step back and even sometimes where I couldn't even walk uh, and that was very frustrating was like okay now you have this taste of it and then you're like well now I have to go back to using crutches I can't carry anything like what this sucks yeah (laughs) and it can easily I can uh, there were times where I felt pretty low because I'm like is this ever going to end like or is this my life and um so luckily it, it does get better, but yeah, even recently I, I got to the point, I was working with Cozy, I was running very well, it was no longer Russian roulette in the morning, but if I would put my leg on, is it gonna hurt? Am I gonna be able to run? Um, it was, everything was consistent. And then I, um, that, this was my first socket and I didn't know necessarily I had been prepared that for the first year after starting to walk that every three months or so you might need a new socket because your lens shrinking and changing and all this stuff. But I think I had that socket uh, maybe six months Yeah. and I just kept adjusting with socks and I wasn't really like I wasn't in pain. So I was thinking, you know, everything's okay until one day it wasn't. It started with like a little twinge in the hamstring area when I was walking and I didn't think much of it. I was just like, I'll just push through it. It's fine. And then decided to run. And I got halfway through my run and I felt something pop in my knee and like had a golf ball size uh, swelling on the side of my knee and couldn't, again, couldn't walk for a few weeks. And um, coming back from that nicely, started on physical yeah. therapy, actually. Yep. She started at that point. I was uh, thinking I was in lockdown with COVID with my children. So she went to a colleague of mine who's a sports physical therapist. Um, and again, guys, this is one thing as I know many of you say that you don't have necessarily amputee PTs in your area, um, but there's a lot that you can work with with an orthopedic physical therapist to mm-hmm. help you with some of these injuries. Okay. And I know that part of the takeaway from this is realizing that the recovery process is like this, that it's two steps forward, one step back, and that you need that team sometimes. I know I needed my, my own team when I was going through my own uh, health crisis to show me that, yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You've just 
got to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that you can really. For sure. And about. just making friends and talking to other amputees definitely helps. And um, I was just looking a few last month, I think I was looking at Nicole uh, run for stump. Yes. And she had had the same issue where like her, she needed a new socket. And it's been since I think she was 10 or 12 that she had her amputation. So it's been a while. And I was like, oh my gosh, this still happens to her. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's like Jessica said, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. So many times we see these amazing stories and it's good to see these amazing stories because it's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. But behind these amazing stories, there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of obstacles. Even uh, Haven Shepard, she's been on my show. She's training for the Paralympic swim team. She's 17 years old in the best shape of her life. And she talks about how difficult it is to go through her daily life as an amputee. And she's been an amputee since she was about one year old. So I think it's good to sometimes kind of pull back the curtain and see like, yes, there are struggles and that you can get through it. And even though some of you may not be necessarily runners like Jessica, those of you who are learning how to walk, there's so many setbacks that can happen. And I think if there's one thing I'd like to tell my patients is it's not you, (laughs) it's the process. This is part, unfortunately, it is a part of the process but this is a normal part to have to go through some of these setbacks. And this is why the importance of having a team. So like Michelle says, Michelle says, I was lucky they put me into rehab to heal diabetic. So slow healer and had a team approach all along visited in rehab have come to TT too. So guys, if there's one, you know, take away from this, that there's a team approach, you need that full team behind you. Um, let's see, Bonnie says my first prosthetist like Jessica never examined my residual limb and didn't realize the tibia was out of place and almost coming through the skin and the prosthetic made it worse and just thought I was being oversensitive due to what he did. I've been in a wheelchair for over two years. So guys, you know, unfortunately we have these things prop up. I, I am very fortunate that I work with so many amazing good prosthetists in my area. Um, and I have that rapport with them and I find that the patients that work with both the physical therapist and the prosthetist together have better outcomes because we can kind of tag team all these different setbacks that you may be having. So I know I've chatted with uh, Jessica's prosthetist on occasion just to kind of help troubleshoot to see on the alignment on her running leg. Um, and and Jessica is such an amazing and motivated individual that that but you know we need those moments of how to move forward. So. If you could give yourself advice, those first, that first week, I know I'm like throwing the question <laughs> at you right now. Oh. What advice would you have given yourself back then? Just that attitude is everything. And I know that that sounds cliche and that everyone's heard that, but it really is. And your brain is really powerful. And I realized that I could have taken it one of two ways. And I'm very glad that I, I had the support to take it the positive way instead of thinking, my life is over and like, what am I going to do? Cause you know, those thoughts come across no matter who you are, but yeah, your brain is really powerful and it's definitely capable of helping you heal faster too. So. And Jody says setbacks are part of life and they are, and they are guys. So guys, before we keep going, we're going to do our third and final giveaway for today, but have no fear. If you didn't get a chance to win today, You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more opportunities between tomorrow and Thursday to win. By the way, if you guys have not filled out your virtual stamp cards, do it now. Okay. For those of you wondering, virtual stamp cards, you can go to my website at www.cosytalks.com. Throw your email address address in there. I can't talk right now. I've been like talking too long. Um, And you'll receive a virtual stamp card. It's got three questions. You answer those questions, send it in, and you'll be entered into a raffle giveaway that I'll be doing Thursday at the end of this series. Okay, so if you haven't filled it out yet, fill it out. It's like a massive goodie bag. I mean, like all the sponsors were like pitching into this goodie bag. It's awesome, guys. So speaking of sponsors, our third giveaway today is sponsored by Blatchford. Blatchford is relatively new to the Cozy Talks team in sponsoring the show. They were formerly known as Endolite. And they have been absolutely wonderful to work with. They are truly committed to helping bring education into this community. 
And if you look on my website, you'll see some of my favorite items from Blatchford that we've talked about on the show. We've talked about the Elan, their microprocessor hydraulic ankle system, the Echelon, their hydraulic system. We've talked about their Silk Hair Breathe Liner, which I am madly in love with, especially in hot, sticky, humid Florida. So we've, been, we've talked a lot about the Silk Hair Liner ourselves. And also we're gonna be talking about the Lynx coming up in September, which is the first fully integrated microprocessor knee and foot system. So there's a lot of goodies to check out in Blatchford. So the giveaway, they've got a goodie bag. And guys, this thing is pretty heavy. I'm gonna let you hold it. It's pretty heavy. It's full of a lot of great Blatchford swag. And I've had to keep my fingers out of it because I've got that swag. <laughs> Okay, so this is for my Instagram folks. Guys, go to the Instagram account for Blatchford, and their handle is Blatchford GRP, Blatchford Group. Kristen, if you can put that up there for us, that would be amazing. Go to their Instagram page, and I need you to post hashtag mobility made possible. Okay? Hashtag mobility made possible. First person. To put that on the Blatchford Instagram account is going to win the swag bag. So I see some comments rolling in waiting for our winner. Uh, let's see. Jesse says, actually, I have come to find out everyone able or disabled has daily struggles in life, but it truly helps when you have a great support system and mental fortitude. And actually, that is the difference. And Jessica stated it perfectly. It is all about attitude. And guys, there's, it's actually kind of interesting that it's Jessica and Jesse commenting. But Jesse <laughs> happens to be one of the admins of a very large support group on Facebook, the NPT Help and Support Line. And he is a wonderful uh, resource there. Uh, the Peer Founder says, I live in Maryland and I am a bilateral below the knee amputee and I've been blessed with an amazing team. They are compassionate and very informative and they are always willing to refer me for outside help with whatever they may not be sure of. And guys, those of you who are fortunate to live in an area where you have a comprehensive team, those teams back in Miami, back in the hospital in Miami, here in Tampa, things are just a little bit more spread out. Um, but the team approach is absolutely crucial. And I say this to my clinicians, for physical therapists out there, even if you don't have experience working with amputees, but you want to be able to help that amputee who comes into your clinic, Form those relationships with the prosthetist. Get to know your prosthetist. Prosthetist, same thing. If you don't have a physical therapist in your area who claims to be an amputee specialist, get to know some of your PTs in your area. And working together can really make such a huge difference for your patients. All right, guys, we are waiting for winner, and we might have to indicate that winner a little bit after the show is over for our Instagram account. So just a reminder, guys, if you want a chance to win the Blatchford giveaway, go to the Blatchford Instagram and post hashtag mobility made possible. Oh, okay, Charles, that's okay. We're going to have other giveaways for Facebook in the next couple of days as well. So Jessica, what is coming up next for you? Now that you're kind of rehabbing and, and you're kind of moving along, what's next for you? Uh, hopefully if, COVID's all gone away in November. Um, I'm going to be running a half marathon. I ran it every year since it started. It's called the St. Pete Run Fest. And I, well, I missed last year because that was my amputation. So hopefully this year everything will work out and I'm doing it. Half marathon. Am I running this one with you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I'll be running my first half marathon in November. <laughs> But it'll be cooled off by then, and you can you can carry Sometimes. me. Yeah, you can carry me that last time. <laughs> that, that's all. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't had a chance to watch these videos, it's just poetry in motion to watch her run and do some of these coordination exercises. Um, you can look both on my Instagram account and on my Facebook videos, and you'll just see some of the coordination exercises um, that she and I have been working on that are just like, kind of just fun to watch. All right, guys, we are wrapping up our first day of the live event series. Jessica, thank you so much, so much, so much, so much, much for being here and, and helping with the tech support before you and afterwards. <laughs> thank you to my tech team. Thank you so much. Mitzi, my beautiful photographer who has been going shuddering away, shuddering away, shuddering away. So we're gonna have some beautiful pictures of this live event. I'm so excited about that. Guys, tomorrow we are talking muscles, okay? We're talking the real deal, not Dr. Google information, not you know somebody who just wants to write about muscles. This is medical textbook referenced information. 
how a muscle works, how is it built, and how you can build your muscles and do some muscle strengthening. And I have special guest Karen coming in to help demonstrate and her, tell her beautiful story as well. We've got giveaways. Guys, spread the word. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. For those of you who don't necessarily like Facebook, we've got YouTube channel. Join us once again tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Big, 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 big thank you to my sponsors, Blatchford, College Park Industries, and VitalFit. All right, guys. We will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.